What's up guys? So today we are going to plan a wedding photography itinerary together. And this is one of my more important wedding photography videos because in this video, we are gonna go through an actual mock timeline. We're gonna make one together and I'm just gonna give you all of my tips and tricks and you also get a free download of the actual welcome email that I send to my clients. So the first thing you need to know, it's so important that you communicate with your clients very early on in the booking process. You need to explain to them how much time that you will need to get the photos that you show on your website. I speak at length about the time needed for each phase of the wedding day during the initial consult. That's how important it is. I also include a mock itinerary in their contract that says that the itinerary is subject to change, you know, well, closer to the wedding day. I also send my clients a welcome letter and it includes that I will need X amount of time for the different phases of the day and things that they may not think about, like what time the flowers should be there, you know, they need to be there by the time of the preformals, or that the venue needs to be decorated by the allotted time that we discuss or we might need drive time, and that includes time to pack and unpack for each location. So make sure and get your free download of the welcome letter that I actually send to my clients in the description box. I also include a blank formals shot list for them to fill out their groupings, and I am explicit that I need three minutes per photograph. This will ensure that they are well aware of what I need to emulate the photography on my website. When I say three minutes per photograph, what I mean is three minutes per grouping. So if we are assembling a large group of the wedding party, we want to make sure that their necklaces are straight, their hair is not out of place, you know, there's not lint on someone's jacket. So we want to look critically at each grouping and we have to assemble them. It usually takes about three minutes per shot. So I start with the ceremony and I work my way backwards with the itinerary. And so let's go through a mock itinerary that's beginning with the ceremony at 4 p.m. So generally with Western weddings, of course you have to adjust it for whatever type of wedding it is, but generally Western weddings are about 11 to 15 minutes long, sometimes 20 to 30, depending on what they um, are having in their ceremony. If they have extra things like they're building a cross or pouring sand or something like that. So I include about 30 minutes of time for the ceremony itself, which would be four to 4.30. So working backwards, I know that I have to have at least 15 minutes to prep um, with my team. So I'll have a pre-ceremony meeting with my team at the ceremony and uh, the settings need to be in, we need to be ready to go 15 minutes before the ceremony. So that way we can ensure that I know where I'm going to be standing. My second knows where they're going to be standing. If we have an assistant, what they're going to be doing, videographer, etc. Now, depending on the location, some of these things may change or move. For instance, if we had to travel somewhere, we might have to put travel time in between the settings prep, you know, or something like that. But for this itinerary, we are assuming that the ceremony and reception and they're getting dressed all in the same spot. So we move back to the groom pre-formals. I call them pre-formals, meaning they're before the ceremony, so like pre-ceremony formals. You know, generally you get the groom and his parents and the groom and the groomsmen. And that usually can take anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how large the wedding party is. So you're gonna wanna decide that with your actual couple and what their needs are for their wedding. So I put 30 minutes in here. You also always want to add a little bit of extra wiggle room time for each little thing that can go wrong. For instance, we had a groom forget the ring once, so we had to change things around on the itinerary. We've customarily had grooms running late and brides running late, so adding extra time in is always good. So I'm gonna put the groom getting his photographs alone from 2.30 to 2.45. So I got 15 minutes of him by himself and he's, um, you know, we're just getting the shots of him at the window or outside um, in front of the venue, things like that. So just formals of him. I put the groom alone and the groom preformals together because they run together. So when I would send out the itinerary closer to the actual ceremony when we've actually, um, you know, probably like two weeks 
before the actual wedding and the couple and I have nailed it down completely. Let's say that it was established that the groom was getting dressed or get, was going to have his photos at 2.30 and the preformals were gonna be at 2.45. Then we would send out a letter or an email. I would send it to the couple and then they could send it to the wedding party. The groomsmen and the family and everyone would know that they needed to be ready to be dressed to go and at a certain spot at 2.30. So even though we're doing just the groom alone at that time, we wanna make sure that there's a little wiggle room if somebody's running late, that there's you know 15 minutes, whatever, so that we can make sure everybody's ready at the 2.45 mark. Now, we have the groom dressing from 2 to 2.30. Generally what I do is I ask my grooms to be dressed up to their shirts. So pants, shirt, shoes. I will photograph him putting on like a tie, cufflinks, um, things like that. And if he wants other people in the pictures, like if he wants his groomsmen helping him put his cufflinks on and doing all that, I will ask for them to be dressed by that time as well. So moving back, we are at the bride preformals. So the bride family, bride and family photos and bridesmaids, 1.30 to 2. Generally, I schedule more time for the bride than I do the groom. Maybe not for the preformals, but definitely for her dressing. So we've gone down to the bride alone, 1.15 to 1.30. Of course, we're gonna make sure that everybody's dressed by this point, all of everybody that's gonna be photographed on her side for the bride dressing from 1230 to 115. So it's gonna be dependent on the type of dress that she has. If she has one that ties up the back, I've seen that take 15 to 20 minutes or even longer. Now, I generally, and I put this in my letter, I want my brides to be dressed to their hair and makeup done by the time that I get there so that we can do the important stuff. So we'll have her putting her earrings on, getting her dress on, all those types of things. I like for, to see them putting their earrings on and their jewelry after they've gotten their dress on because it makes for a very beautiful photo. I don't know any women that want pictures of themselves without their makeup on yet. And then also if people are helping her get dressed, then they want to be dressed by that time too. So generally when we send the mock itinerary or when we send the finalized itinerary out, I'll put on there in parentheses, you know, that time that she's getting dressed, that mom and the bridesmaids need to be dressed by the time we're getting her dressed. So she'll be the last one to get dressed. We also want to ensure that the bouquet is there. Um, any sort of corsages are there for the mothers, boutonnieres, of course, for the groomsmen and the groom. All of that needs to be delivered and ready to go and in a certain spot. So we go back to the wedding venue details. So I actually plan in the time for this because people think that it just magically happens beautifully. So I plan in about 30 minutes for venue details unless it's something extensive going on. I don't need a whole lot of time. And then going back from that, the first thing that I wanna do when I get there are the bride and groom details. I put an hour in for this because it can take a full 30 minutes to do a flat lay. So of course I tell my clients they need to have a box ready to go by 11 or whatever time I'm gonna get there and that if they're not there yet, someone else needs to be there. The box needs to have anything important, invitations, cufflinks, shoes, um, photographs that they may have put on to like um, a jewelry thing for the flowers, the bouquet, uh, any sort of special item, perfume that needs to be photographed needs to be in the box and the box needs to be with the attire, so the dress, veil, all that stuff needs to be ready to go in the same spot for me when I get there so I can just start at that point. So now we're gonna move on to after the ceremony. Now, this is where it can get a little tricky. A lot of times clients wanna go, like they wanna take just a couple of photos. They, they always say that, oh, we just want a couple photos after the ceremony. Oh, you want two hours? You want, you know, they don't like giving you a lot of time after the ceremony before they start the reception and they don't understand that if they want the photographs that they see on the website they have to give you the time which is why it's so important to make sure you communicate with them so after the ceremony of course you want to instruct your clients to have a particular place that everyone who's going to be in the formals photographs will meet up and so they of course want to email them as well so you know great aunt mary 
might want to be in these photographs, Great Aunt Mary needs to be emailed and you may make sure your, your clients understand that they need to get that finalized wedding itinerary. So you tell them where and when to meet. So we're going to say 430 and they have to meet at a certain spot. You're going to start your formals at that point. Well, you'll probably go get them because you, you're probably looking at a location to actually shoot the formals because you don't know what the light's going to be like or the weather or anything. So they'll stay in that little holding location and then you go and grab them and you know, you have an assistant there. I usually tell them that I need someone that knows the family and that knows the people to go through the shot list with me, not my assistant, nothing like that. And the reason is because we don't know these people. We also don't uh, need to assemble the people as in uh, getting them together. And I instruct my clients that, you know, we're not responsible for getting photographs of anyone who is not present when they are supposed to be done. So we go into the formals. I put on here that we would have 30 to 45 minutes of like the big grouping wedding formals. We're probably looking at about 15 to 20 groupings. Um, and I also instruct my clients that for the formals, that it's so much better to have larger group shots rather than smaller group shots. So let's say that the couple wanted photographs with their entire family and then both of their families or you know the bride's family and the groom's family i think that's perfect but when they start doing smaller groupings like okay we're going to have the bride and the groom with great aunt mary's family then we're going to have the bride with great aunt mary's family then we're going to have the groom with uncle bob and sister you know whoever of course it, they can do whatever they want. I just instruct my clients that this is the best way to do bigger groupings and then um, go on to the couple photographs because that's really what's extremely important. Now, if they give me tons of time and they want to have all those smaller groupings, then that's perfect and we will definitely cover that for them. But if it's not a lot of time, then I instruct them, you know, we need to make the groupings bigger and have less photographs. Depending on the venue, I'm going to need at least 30 minutes for the couple's photographs, possibly more if it's a larger place or if it's um, difficult or, we, we, or if they want to have them off site and we have to drive somewhere. So all of that needs to be factored in. So then after the couple's formals, it will be time for the grand entrance. So you have to run back, get set up for that. Then will come whatever way that they have things going. I also put in my contract that me and two other people, if it's a wedding five hours or more that we're going to be there, that we have to have a hot meal that is comparable to what the wedding couple is getting. So um, I put that in my contract so we don't get some sandwich lunch or something like that. We get what they're being served and that we have to have an allotted at least 30 minutes to eat and that we prefer to eat when the couple is eating. So we need to be served right after the couple is served or we need to be first in line after the family if it's a buffet um, to get our plates. And I instruct the couples in all of that information beforehand, of course. So then uh, I will provide a mock exit if they want to do one of those. If they don't want to contract me longer than the first hour of the reception, which this is a whole other video on how I price my weddings. But um, I then, of course, will do a mock exit. I schedule that at least 20 minutes before it's time for me to go so that I have some time to get it and then pack up. And then that's it. So anyway, guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you got some tips. Um, I am doing wedding and engagement online courses. I'm making them this year. If you want to be in the know about when those are going to come out, of course, you can get your free download and get on my email list, or you can just join my email list. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys next time.